which at this point I'm almost 40 years old and have as much hair as I got, I think I'm okay. Yeah, that would be safe. <laughs> but people are starting to ask me, you going to be Santa? I'm like, <laughs> she was like 11 or 12 and she's like huh? okay now you guys kind of pipe down you know we, we, we're not here to have fun we, we know there might be a snowstorm brewing I can just tell this you know what that means thanks for sending us down yeah, yeah, the critters were kind of calm this morning but, uh, yeah. 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 yeah I don't know I had to, I had to tap the pickup dash go go What's this minus 13? <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you get up? Minus 18, 21 down in the river down there. Yeah. And I go, it's just on the way that pickup, right? <laughs> it has to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gauges are off. The gauges are off. Yep. Get it yeah. recalibrated. Yep, yeah, yeah, and you no. better bring it in. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. I don't bring it in. Think it it's, I think it's uh, okay, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's okay. Well, I hope everybody's set at least one. Yeah. Oh, head mm -hmm. power. I didn't hear nothing. I mean, they're done counting. Well, Rough Riders. Yeah, that's right. Rough Riders have parts of your ride. I didn't say, yeah, ours. We have Rough Rider and ours didn't go. You said parts of your Parts of your South side of town and then the west side of town had a couple. And I don't know if that was scheduled or if there was a. There was an incident I know last week. Oh yeah, I, I didn't have power for a couple hours that Oh morning. yeah. Yeah. Kids, kids weren't too impressed <laughs> trying to get ready in the dark. I'm like, well, guys, I, I'll tell you. Go with the flow. <laughs> yeah. Get some flashlights. And I was like, mm -hmm. when do I grab my camera? Yeah. They put out a lot of good heat there. They do actually. Yeah. That's right. It doesn't matter if you have propane heat. If you don't have an no. electric fan, you still got no heat. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Yep. But I had that generator going to turn off all the breakers oh. except for the freezer and the refrigerator. That's all the Nothing. Yep. It worked fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll call the February 17th Commerce County Commission meeting to order. We have the agenda in front of us. Anything, anybody got anything they want to add to the agenda? Yes, Mr. Chairman, there's several things I would like to add. Uh, the first two are road funds report. And the treasurer's report. And I actually requested those last Friday morning. They never made the list though. And the treasurer's, re treasurer's report. In addition to that, I have a couple of more. One is financial reports, landfill report. That both of those are gonna be easy ones. And then I'm gonna ask to put housing authority on there. And the treasurer will be reporting on that. So and what was the last one? Housing authority. Housing. What, Mercer County Housing Authority? Yes. Okay. That's all. Anybody got anything else? Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? As amended. I make that move. Okay, a second? I'll second that. I vote aye. Travis? Aye. Uh, Wayne? I vote aye. Liza? Aye. Jean, aye. Okay, minutes.
minutes of the February 3rd meeting as printed. Any additions or corrections? Any none, I'd like a motion to approve as printed. I'll move to approve the minutes as presented. Second? I'll second. Any other discussion? Any none? Travis? Aye. Liza? Aye. Marvin? Aye. Wayne? I'll vote aye. Gene, aye. Okay, review and approve bills. That better? Thanks for reminding me. I typically talk in front of a when I used to, which been a few years. I'm usually pretty vocal. I'm not too quiet, so. Said you like the cold weather. Do you go out fishing? Is that road superintendent going to be I'd here? I'd like to, but I haven't been. <laughs> <laughs> Can right? Oh, just, oh, just, just no time. <laughs> cold weather stuff. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of ice then. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't safe to do so. <laughs> Sign this one. Yeah. If anybody has a question on one of the bills, let me know. Then I set it aside because I'm signing <laughs> as I get them.
trying to figure that was the answer, but. Yeah, yeah. anytime I get procrastinated on that stops. Question, Shannon. We have a bill from Custer Health for nursing. I'm curious because they have a meal levy and they get they have their own fund. Is this out of our our, our responsibility? Sure there is. I'm just going to take a picture of it quick so I can refer to it. Thousand one forty four one twenty three eighty eight. Which is in the budget. Right. Okay. We don't get reimbursed for any part of that, yes or no? That cluster help. They don't send us a check back or anything? No, we will reimburse them for her. Okay.
this year, the only time we had a really big rain this summer, I look out the window, here comes a propane truck backing in my yard. Oh, gosh. I walked out, I said, Keith, what are you doing? Well, I was in the neighborhood. I said, Keith, <laughs> you can't even fill my propane tank. You gotta walk through the backyard and it's all filled up. I'm ready to seed it. I said, it's all mud. You're gonna get your hose, everything. It's like, well, I'm here. Okay, whatever. I really don't like you coming in when it's muddy. Well, he was parked already, had part of the hose out. I went in the house. Five minutes later, he left. He decided he didn't want to walk through that much. It's still filled up. And it's our Keith. Scram. We already had a scram. Farmers Union meeting, they're doing their annual meeting. Paul says, well, if you can't hear Paul, or can't hear Keith, it's not in the building. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> it was funny. Okay, so this is part of that Siren Real Radio stuff that we're going to be getting. That we have not much of a choice. Oh no, we already proved it. <laughs> All that too. But I mean, even prior to that, was my understanding we didn't have a lot of. The state said no shell. And you said, thank you, sir, man, have enough. <laughs> <laughs> One of those things, well, you approve it or you can disapprove it, but it's still going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you're going to get a bill. <laughs> you're going to get a bill. Diesel's gone up, hasn't it? Yeah, it's sneaking up. Hmm? Yeah, it's sneaking back up. <clears throat> they got it though. Farm, they may have filled already. Yeah, pretty good right here. As they go through, they go through about 15,000 gallons a year. Shudder to realize the overhead for farming. Yeah. So those checks that they write on. One of the guys I'm planning is zoning raises cattle. He sent two years. 
years ago, he took everything to sell, and he said, God, God, when I came out so damn flush, it just felt really, really good, you know? So I came home, he paid all my bills, and basically handed over my check. <laughs> mm -hmm. Kind of blew his bubble, he said. Has it been so cold over in Minnesota too? They have that in yeah, how did they have that insight, huh? You guys have any livestock or just farming? All just all grain. Just all the grains. Good, good, good. It's been pretty quiet the last few weeks. Last couple of week and a half since it's been so cold they don't want to run the truck down the road. It wouldn't be fun to have a loaded truck to help on you, would it? He said if you break down, we don't want to be working on a truck when it's negative 40 wind chill out there or greater. Because they kind of take up the road, so you gotta, can't really pull them down into the ditch. And <laughs> Kind of parked on the road. It's kind of scary when you've got that just to climb out of them, right? Yeah. I, the, I lost uh, a can Is it here? not long ago on a trip. <laughs> well, I, you need to read every one of the brakes went out. Yeah. Went out okay. on, engaged on me, so I had to go through the can. I lost part of the road. <laughs> so I had, there wasn't even a shoulder on that road. <laughs> Sorry, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> Which can it was? Oh, is that it? Not yet. You got the big one. Okay. The, the big, big one's one. coming. The West River one, huh? Yeah. Yep. That'll take you half an hour to sign all of them. Okay. <laughs> sure. I think she's got one just on the back, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's just... Gwen will come and find you, don't worry. Gee, <laughs> you can't cheat that. Yeah. You Gwen already all. said she wants to see me after, though. Nothing but kudos, right? <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Okay, are there any questions or about the bills? Hearing none, I'd like a motion to approve them. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I'll second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Wayne. I'll vote aye. Liza. Aye. Travis. Aye. Marvin. Aye. Gene, aye. Okay, January sheriff's fees, 3781.86. I'll move to accept the sheriff's fees. I'll second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Travis, how you vote? Aye. Liza? Aye. Marvin? Aye. Wayne? I vote aye. Gene, aye. CARES fundings to cities, police contracts. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, we also received a letter from quite some time back from uh, Association of Counties, and they briefly mentioned just exactly what Shannon said, is that uh, th for cities that receive, that help pay for law enforcement, that we may, that you might consider giving them part of the CARES money of some value. So that was recommended also. as. A, consideration from the DACO. He didn't say to do it or not to do it. But just so you're aware that that was out there too. What's our total? Is it 42,000 altogether? Uh, they each pay 14,220. So that's 42. Yep, 14,220. And how many, how many municipalities pay that? Total cares that we received was about 1.2 million. It's actually 1.33, but okay. their policing contract. Um, you know, we only received cares money for nine uh, months out of the last year, and they pay 11.85. So nine months would be 10,665 if we reimburse them at 100 percent for those nine months. Do you know what other counties reimbursed or I how they? I don't know that. Um, there was the reason Rachel and Cindy had brought it up is because apparently there's something on the League of Cities, something out there with the League of Cities that it was showing different counties that were reimbursing their cities. Um, I was going to try to find out, I didn't get a copy of the contract from the Sheriff's Department, but I was wondering if we wanted to go based on hours that were contracted or if we wanted to do a percentage or if we wanted to do anything at all. Um, I know that some of them have looked into like how many hours are spent, and I, I don't believe it's many. What percentage did uh, Mercer County receive as a whole? Of the total allocation for the state of North Dakota? As a total, like our um, so total. We received as a whole 1.33, and that was um, based on our wages and benefits of our licensed peace officers that we have. So Correct. I turned that into the state every month to receive the reimbursement of 100%. For okay, that. that was, thank you. Yep. And that included the three towns was in that total also? Well, uh, see, we just contracted those towns. So right. the deputy has to spend so many, so much time in each town per month. Okay. 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 Yes, I got it. Well, what's, what's the rest of the commission feel? Give me one second. I'm doing a calculation and I'll offer an, offer an idea. While he's working on that calculation, I mean, I see it fit that we do reimbursement because the CARES Act was based on the Sheriff's Department, which all these cities pay into. But how we do that, 
I'm open. I think the easiest route, mm -hmm. instead of trying to figure out time and hours, you know, dollars per hour and all that stuff, would just be to reimburse them the nine months that you take, because essentially you got those nine months of tuition for free at the county because you were reimbursed by the county or the state mm -hmm. or the federal government. So, and then that would total the ten thousand six hundred sixty-five dollars. Is that per each city? Per city. Per so city. it's times three. So. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I fully agree with what Travis said, that uh, we should do, should consider some way. What I was doing, uh, I'm not sure that I think that we want to reverse each of them 10665 I'm not sure that I'm interested in that, but I would like to consider a percentage, and I'm not sure how we would do that, but one thing that I did do is that, um, they have roughly $42,000 that they contribute to our bill, and we got one point. Well, Shannon has a different number than me. Uh, what I found in the revenue reports is we have 1.201,087. So what I did is I took that 42,000 and I divided it by the 1.2, and it comes out to like three and a half percent. So if we got, we can, some kind of a percentage might work better. That's up to the majority of the board, and that can be calculated. What I might offer is that we table this to the next meeting, so everybody, this is fresh, and you have time to review some information and see what you, what, what's your guys' thoughts? I'm not opposed to tabling it till the next meeting, because this. I just have, uh, one thought, you know, to uh, contemplate um, in lieu of just issuing a refund, maybe we'd give a discount going forward to a certain amount. Okay, I mean, um, either way, it kind of comes out to the same, but um, I don't know if the cities would prefer that or not, but it might be a way to prevent a bunch of money exchanging and just kind of a, you know, somewhat of a credit yeah, for the credit. following year. Yeah. Just a thought. Need a motion to table? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. For discussion purposes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we table this to our next meeting. No, I have a second on that. I'll second that. Any other? Dis I'm, I'm writing notes here. Sorry. I don't want to <coughs> keep myself. Trying. Okay, any other discussion on that, tabling that motion? Or that item, I should say, that motion. Hearing none, uh, Marvin? Aye. Travis? Aye. Wayne? I'll vote aye. Liza? Aye. And I'll vote aye. So we'll, t we'll bring that up the next meeting again. And we'll all give it a little thought and try some research. Uh, 931. Portfolio updates. I always start it down there with Wayne. I'll start at this end. With myself. Oh, we start in order. I did the uh, Mercer County Economic Development. I've uh, been in contact with them and they gave me an update on, f on future meetings. And that was all I had on that. The North Dakota River Advisory Council, um, that's a, the same thing. They, they, their note, note, note to me was there are a number of things occurring in the background, but no formal meetings are currently scheduled. I'll get your name placed on the list and update you on ongoing activities. Western Dakota Energy, um, I think a lot of us have been seeing their um, updates. Policy Committee, 
they that's same as last time they'll contact me and nothing new from well the clerk of court we're down to basically uh, one full-time person in there right now the other person is out on leave so she's quite busy state's attorney and the sheriff I have nothing to report from those two departments that's it for me Marvin okay I had a virtual meeting with uh, Custer Health uh, they do an excellent job even virtual it's sorry to say but we're almost becoming comfortable with it uh, very good discussions they had a quarterly meeting and went reviewed their budget and and all their different departments what they're doing nice help uh, positive meeting I also visited with the road department and that was most of a more of an introductory meeting i've met with them before but not as their portfolio holder so this was more of a review uh, we did review their one and three year plan for projects that we're going to be hoping to accomplish the next three years and that will be updated every year and we also looked at uh, possibly preparing a table that would show a five-year plan for uh, equipment purchases We'll make a list of all their equipment and what it's costing us to date and when we feel that it needs to be replaced and there I asked them to consider that and uh, they're looking at that and that's all I have thank you Travis uh, water resource board met last week um, for their monthly meeting um, kind of business as usual they um, are still figuring out um, the cost share um, on the Stanton stabilization project that they did um, the numbers um, are looking good um, I think if they told me correctly that we had allocated um, 66,000 they're thinking their request is going to be less than 60,000 uh, the number was kind of in the 57,000 range um, because they got um, some some state funding as well so um, they haven't quite made a decision on what they were going to what they are going to request but um, all indications are that it's going to be several thousand less than, than what we had budgeted for so that's uh, good news for us and um, I wasn't at the last uh, fair board meeting so um, I'm assuming they're just kind of lining up things and um, getting ready for the fair which is in July so that's all I got okay thank you Liza I just um, the ambulance board won't meet until this coming Monday and that'll be their annual meeting and um, I haven't had any indications that anything's going on for Carmen other than setting up the fire ban and then I plan to talk to Candy soon for the land grant. Thank you. Uh, Wayne? The, yeah, the, the, the yeah. weed board oh, yeah. met the other night when it was terrible hot out but and uh, so they're uh, basically gearing up for this coming spring uh, they're doing bids for the chemical and uh, and kind of discussing cost share uh, for the county and so they just kind of getting geared up and see where this is going to go and and tomorrow I guess I got social service so I'll find out what's happening over in that corner so that's about it okay thank you Road, re road funds report Marvin okay I gave you guys some documents and hopefully they didn't get shuffled road funds report be very short and that's the very top sheet you can just look at that it showed our revenue uh, of carryover we got fifty thousand dollars end of year 2020 was 474 um, it just shows that our revenue our expenses are slightly above it that's all I'm just that's all I have to show you that our expenses are slightly above our, our mm -hmm. revenue. Okay. And what I want to offer the board is if anybody wants to look at, at your these reports and, and correct me on it, I'll be welcome to take any direction I can get on that. Okay, thank you. Um, Treasurer's report. We'll have to call her in for that okay. treasurer's report. 
So, can I go get her? We can get her in an hour. How much time we got? Yeah, we got she can twenty there. minutes. Sure. Shannon, would you mind giving her a jingle on the phone? Or, or, I can go. I don't need I'm sorry. I thought you did. I don't have my key card, so if I go. Oh, I have mine. I couldn't get back in. Thanks, Is that this one? No. These are different. If you want to walk through some of these, we can, till she gets here, that'd be fine too. Okay. Those are financial reports. Okay. Morning. So what am I up here first for? Yep. Well, we didn't have a time for the treasurer and we we're walking through business and so you were the next on the list. Okay. Before I do the um, treasures, the balance sheet stuff, I have a check for Mercer County Housing Authority. I'd that's like to also on the agenda. She just wants to do both at the same time. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Can I do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Every year, the Mercer Colony Housing Authority sends to us um, their, it's called in lieu of, so, um, wait time on this slide, so. They send us a check, they pay their taxes and stuff in Mercer County, and they request we give the money back. I usually get the check. There's usually two checks this year. There's only one. So I, re I always ask that you guys return it because that's what they ask in their letter is to have the money returned. And over the years, they have kept up with their taxes and specials. So this year, the check is 7755 even. I didn't get one. That's the right though. I read it. And how much was the check again, please? Seven thousand seven fifty-five. And that's for taxes alone. They've already paid their taxes. They just, if you look, there's a formula they have included in that packet there that figures out what they, um, how they come up with their figures. And you know, over the years, you know, they, they used to be behind, but now they're not. And they've always paid their taxes here the last four, five, six years. Um, they, they use this money, if we send it back to them, they use this money to improve the um, housing for the area that, you know, that they have housing in. So it's usually low income properties, so. Maybe Wayne can enlighten him a little bit on that. He knows a little bit about it. Marvin might. So, to you three, that. Yeah, basically, um, I, I guess as long as I've been around, uh, Dave, uh, we the commission board has uh, uh, basically refunded their check. They, uh, it's good to see they. Uh, there was a time they. They were really scrapping to make ends meet, and their budget was really tight. And, uh, and and it's good to see that whatever happened here, they're a little more on the positive side, and things are coming around for them. But they do have, uh, as you're aware, if we have a housing uh, uh, facility here in Stanton, we have one in Hazen, uh, we have the uh, one in Villa. And I think the one in Green Valley, right? Yep. There's one in Stanton, Hazen, yep. there's Hazen. Yep. Ela, Hazen, Golden Valley, Stanton. Stanton, yeah. Well, you might recall a couple of years ago, we did a motion over, I think it was just spending a donation back. And um, you might recall some meetings ago of me indicating we can't do the donation because it's too expensive, one being as it relates to poor. Um, I, I don't have that in the law, and I don't know what's going to be on, but essentially, Services they provide are specifically to that demographic, which we are allowed right. to 
school that are. You know, is this a, a, an item that we should put on the agenda for a, like the next meeting in case there's any public input or no? Do, do we not have to worry about that? It's up to you, um, but I, I don't think it's necessary. Okay. public okay. input, but I don't, I don't know that. Don't but, yeah. And in that information they sent out, one of the sheets does say they had a negative, um, which is why there's only one check, I'm guessing. So I'm guessing they didn't quite have as good a year as yeah. they would like to have had either. But it's just a matter, and this is, this is a um, good example of an exchange check. That exact amount of money will come in. That exact amount of money will go out. It's so great. in no budget. And I just need your approval if you're going to give it today to send that mm -hmm. money to them. Pondering. I just always. Well, uh, Mr. Need, I need to be, um, I guess, a little more educated on. On the um, on money flow within a government entity, because for me, it should be. To me, it should show as an income into the back in the county and then in the, uh, on the, and then going back out. But it's um, you know, for tra for purposes of tracking the money because, and <laughs> like I say, I'm not an accountant by any means, but generally if you receive money, when the county receives money from any entity, I would think that should go into like the treasury show as income, even if we send it back out. So I know I hear this word exchange check all the time and, it, and I see where it has, I've been explained where it has its purpose, but this, this Mercer County the uh, housing authority kind of falls under the blanket of the county. She'll so, put in her change in her Dakota checkbook, so there will be a okay. paper trail. There will be a paper trail. Okay. It, it can be done the way you're suggesting, I guess. It would have to be vouchered out. Um, well, like I say, I'm. <laughs> yes. She's taking out a miscellaneous miscellaneous, but it's tracked in her bank in North Dakota checkbook. Okay. So she's ready to get checked out. But this act, what, what I guess I was trying to say with no uh, budget, there is really no account for it, no fund balance number, no account for it. Right, okay. you're just taking out a miscellaneous miscellaneous. Right. Okay. But well, our treasurer and our auditor are okay with it, so. It's up to you guys how you want to. <laughs> okay. It makes no difference to me. It can nope. be vouchered I'll, out and you two got vouchered a, in, vouchered out, or I mean, and yes. I don't see my state's attorney saying, nope, you can't do it that way, so <laughs> anyway. Well, sort okay. of, <laughs> this has been hashed over a few times, so. Okay, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that we uh, voucher out. Is that the right word? Send back $7,775 to the Housing Authority. Yeah. Okay. Voucher do, out. Do I have a second to that? I'll second motion. That. I'll second that. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Hearing none, Wayne, how do you vote? I'll vote aye. Marvin? Aye. Liza? Aye. Travis? Aye. Gene votes aye. Thank you. And in reference to that bonding sheet of paper, there are some numbers up that Rick um, to get a hold of. He said call him and talk to him. Oh, hmm. is it Val? Oh, is it with Al over there? And Al and Sue, yeah, but I think one of them is signed by Rick Hunt. Oh. Is there one of them is signed? One of them is Alan Schmidt, but I think mm -hmm. Rick Horn, maybe he's my brother. That must be the... Uh, must be in yours, Jeff. Any worries? Any worries is done yet, so... Oh, I thought it was out here. January 29th was the last day of the month. 
Okay. So that figure there, the, the receipts and the payments, that's our money taken in and the money expensed. Payments. And if you look at that balance sheet, there are your to total receipts, total payments. Uh, I'm awesome. Excuse me, Darby, I didn't get one. Short one. I think it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> well, I don't know. This, 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 right now, as of January, we look pretty good. We always do in January and February. So these figures are not misconstrued. This is straight up off the balance sheet. Keep those numbers positive all year long. Yeah. Working on it. Actually, I mean, a little good news. We've taken, as of in, uh, through January, we've collected 49.45% of our taxes. Okay. Which is, and it, I can't, I don't know what last year's was, but in December, we're up by a, over a percent, which doesn't sound like a lot, but, mm -hmm. it, you know, it is, it is a good sign. It's good. We keep track of a lot of things. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Is that it for today? I'm assuming last week was pretty busy since it was the last. Well, time last week and yesterday. Today, now the mail was, or no mail Tuesday today because of the holiday. But yes, we took in a lot of money. Eight to fifteen deadline. Um, there is one other thing. I have a that building fund CD, is renewed. It's got to be renewed by Friday. So. Okay, but in, in the meeting minutes, in, in that, what you sent me, you're saying move it from building maintenance to... It was already moved from building maintenance. Because I don't have a building maintenance fund okay. on the balance sheet. Just to, if you, Mr. Chairman? Yes. That was one of the items that I have on my list, so please stay. And oh, do you mind okay. if Well, I mean, I didn't know. I, ju I just no. know I'm just going to let the bank know today what we were doing. Okay. Do you mind if we discuss that at this time? Long you have a few minutes. If not, I can come back. And w which item was that? It's under financial reports. Okay. It's one of the sheets that I have in front of you. Okay. Okay. Um, if you guys look at this sheet that I gave you, it looks like this. It's farther down the list. That kind of talks about that. The building fund. That showed December 31st, 2020. It shows the building fund of 131,716. That does not correspond with the bank statement on the same date. The fund transfer was made journal entry-wise and in, this, in last year, but it wasn't approved till your guys' last meeting. So what I'm saying is that when this occurs, there's several things that happen when, when you make those journal entries. One is maybe it should not have been made because it doesn't match their bank balance. Our end of year report should match our bank balance. That's one of the concerns. Probably doesn't match the balance sheet either. So it causes several errors. Um, the trial balance report uh, is also shows that for last year it never it never was approved till this year and what I'm saying is our reports that we receive in my opinion need to match the treasurer's report that report that we received uh, th that report that you're holding right now did not match the treasurer's report in my opinion those journal entries should have been reversed and if we wanted to do that transfer, we could have done it this year. So because it doesn't, if, if my understanding is correct, that this fund report, financial statement, needs to match the treasurer's report, we have a trial balance report that's in error and an expenditure to date report that's also in error, both of those for the end of December. 
and also this first report that you're looking at. So, uh, let me please finish if you would. I'm done, go ahead, Shannon, I'm sorry. Can I say something when she's done to about that? So. Okay. Darby? And like Shannon has said in the past, but that was like 2016, 2015, there has been no money added to this CD since then. And yes, they, we, there is only one date. February 9th is the date on the CD. You can change it, but you can add or subtract to a CD if any of you know anything about CDs. Until that date, and you have 10 days after that date, unless you take a penalty. Um, I personally don't care how we do this. Myself, I think it would be better vouchered out if you guys made a voucher from one account into, because the CD has an account number, and so does the maintenance, I'm guessing, as all of them do. And then it would come, I would get a check for that and can take that check to the bank and increase the CD. Um, it's not been done like that before, but that would be on the same lines of this in lieu of stuff. It's, it's a practice I think we should be looking at. Because we actually are taking money from... But since this year is already journal entry out of last year's budget, that won't work. But if, as far as future operation. Yes. Yes. I would like to see that done because... You know, in the, next, in the following year, yes, I would agree with your... At the end of the last evening of December, cut the check out of Jim's account, and then you probably would probably hold it till February. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I disagree with Shannon's statement that this is the way it has always been done. And the reason I'm saying is that we had a budget. This item was not in the 2020 budget. Shanna made a journal entry changing that. She made that journal entry in 2020. It had to be approved. That journal entry was not approved as an expense in 2020. That's why she brought it to the board in 2021. So what we have is a report, a Mercer County financial statement that was provided to the Board of Commissioners that is in error. It does not match the bank balance as of 12-31-2020. But it matches the trial balance and all of my work. You can change trial balances it doesn't if you look at the trial balance on 2021 20 yes it does because some some journal entry was made it does not, the journal the trial balance should also reflect what's in the bank we have a false trial balance and a false expenditure report based on a journal entry that was not approved in 2020 but it's recorded in 2020 but it was approved for 2020 at the last meeting it was approved so are it we, was approved in 2021. For 2020, though, at the last meeting. So are we, <clears throat> are we, is there a proposed change? Is someone proposing that we make a change or do some, in other words, corrective action at this point? I don't think there's can, anything to 
Can I ask a question? Yes. So at the end of everybody's budgets, if we have money left over, if I'm understanding this right, we could get a CD made for our office too? It's not for Jim's office. It's I realize that, but it's money left over in your budget. So if I have money left over in my budget, can I make a CD and start saving for a new printer? Well, I myself don't have an answer to that question right now. Okay. Just, oh, okay. just throwing it out there. Mr. 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 Chairman? Yes, Wayne. Okay, let's back up just a little bit here. Uh, the reason we put this amount of money into this particular building fund is it's no secret to anybody that we have a heating system right above our head. When that baby goes out, it's going to go out. What am I supposed to do? Bring a bunch of candles in for people to heat up the room with? We're talking about a new unit up on the roof. I mentioned this before. We're talking about tenors. We're talking about roofing people. We're talking about a crane. We're talking about tenors and electricians. When that all done and over with, we're lucky we got $300,000 that are gonna cover this bill. So, uh, at the end of the day, it has to get paid. This wasn't just uh, done because we had monies left over. We were trying to look proactively towards the future that when this thing goes down, this board don't have to sit here and say, Shanna, where's the money at? I've heard that stunt how many times? It's, like I said, it's a little proactive. The funds were there. We probably didn't quite go procedurally right, but it's water under the bridge. I think we can go forward here and do it better in the future, but this is the purpose of this, not because Jim just wanted it. It's, it's to get this facility, which is a multi-million dollar facility, up, up to code. This thing's uh, over 25 years old. We're running on faith today. Tomorrow she could go ploop, and I mean, there, there's no replacement parts, there's nothing. It's an antique, for, unfortunately, but that's what we're sitting with, so. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I would like to make a motion for discussion. I move that our 2020 revenue and expenditure reports and trial balance reflect the treasurer's report of 2020. Repeat that. I move that our 2020 revenue and expenditure reports and trial balance reflect the treasurer's report of 2020 for the building fund. Do I have a second to that motion? <clears throat> Sorry, do I have a second to that motion? Do I have a second to that motion? Do I have a second to that motion? Hearing none, motion died. Uh, we're still on treasurer's report. Okay, now, do you, I, I, I don't care where, where do you guys want me to take the money from? A check from the Bank of North Dakota? That's the one that won't pay too much, right, on interest? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've been listening, Wayne. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, I would, yes. I would see. And that's how it's been done in the past. Okay, but there again, you're using this year's tax money to right. increase that CD. Okay, we'll uh, address that this budget season. Just want you to make make you aware of that. Yeah. And I realize we need to have a heating system. Yeah. I, I wasn't. I'm just saying, if there was extra money in my budget, I would like to start saving for a printer. <laughs> <laughs> that one isn't going to last forever either. <laughs> okay. Is anything? there anything else? I have no questions. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
Number six, financial report. Marvin? Still on financial. Oh, wait a minute, 10 o'clock, sorry. Uh, we got road, Ken is up. <clears throat> Surprised you didn't tell me. <laughs> you got the floor. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first one on there is the 2021 load restrictions. And what we do here is get the commissioner approval when frost laws do occur, which we always follow suit with the DOT when they implement them. When that's going to happen, we don't know, but I just want to be proactive and so we have commissioner approval so when they do take effect, we can implement them right away, right after they do it. So I have a list here. We always, Rachel puts that on the website of the roads that are restricted. They'll go down to that, the majority of them go down to 65,000 pounds and six ton per axle, which is known as a class two. And then like the ones that go to the plant and that since they are more pavement, they're, they would still be at that eight ton 105.5. So the other one at the Coteau mine going south is that, or south of Bila is. Same thing, yeah. Same thing. Yeah, Coyote yes. Creek, yep. Yep. That's 105.5? Yep. Yes, that's year round on those year round. Ones. Yep. Okay, how far north um, does that go? Goes up. Let's go up to County 26? Yeah, it goes yep. from 26 at the Y, well, all the way from actually from 49 at Hook Land Sinker up to the Y and then over to west past uh, DGC and up to AVS and Coteau, that stretch in there. And then the Coyote Creek one down south on County 25 goes from 49 to the entrance of Coyote Creek Mine. Okay. Does DOT just let you guys know yeah. when they're going to put it in effect yep. and then Rachel will put post it on the website. Right. Okay. Yep. And then do you guys have to put out signage differently? Correct. Yep. Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. Do we need a motion on this? Yeah. Oh. You should do it. Yep. Okay. I, I'll try to make the motion. We'll <laughs> follow the follow the North Dakota Department of Transportation when they um, put their road restrictions on Mercer County, we'll follow that uh, time when that right. comes up then, right? Great. Yeah. Correct. That's what you heard. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. on the flip side, when they do take them off, because they have those media, the sensors underneath the highway, like right. on, on uh, 49, 49 it runs over by Golden Valley, but it'll tell the actual temperature down below Right. surface but that doesn't mean on all of our if we're having problems with our roads we can leave certain roads on restricted right. until they start to heal up so but we usually follow suit when they're done with them too or when they're lift we take ours off i need a second to that i'll second to that. that okay well, now we can impose just just do impose because yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. there you go Yeah. <laughs> I second it. Yep. What Wade said. <laughs> Any other discussion? Hearing none, Wayne, how do you vote? I'll vote aye. Travis? Aye. Marvin? Aye. Liza? Aye. Jean, aye. WRT number 1731 utility permit. Utility permit 1731 is West River Telephone. They want to uh, underground bore on 6th Street Southwest, which is uh, by the late Ray Kearns and Brian Kearns residences north of Stanton here. And they want to be able to bring service once they cross our county road there, uh, that Bob Fitzgerald place, which is south and east of the Kearns place. I don't, I don't think there's a farmstead there. There must have been at one time, but there's hay fence there, whether or not they're going to put a residence in eventually, but they're just trying to provide fiber optic to that residence. I'm sure it's going to happen in the spring. They're going to do it now. But. Okay. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to accept West River permit, utility permit 1731. 
Second. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Marvin, how do you vote? Aye. Travis? Aye. Liza? Aye. Wayne? I'll vote aye. Jean, aye. Annual bid letting. Uh, the annual bid letting, we're looking at, um, that's for the propane, annual bid, the uh, uh, fuels and oils, and like uh, gravel crushing and tires. We're looking at April 7th, Shanna. Does that work? Usually about 10 o'clock, right? I mean, we always do it. That would gives enough time for Rachel to put the packets together and send them out to the bidders. Excuse me, were we thinking about possibly doing it the day before so that way if we have any mail-ins or anything like that or don't we do mail-ins for this one? Um, they do mail-in, but a lot of them just come in personally and bring their bids right at 10. Right at 10? Okay, yeah. all right. And this is for when are we doing the annual bid letting? It's April 7th at 10 a.m. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'll, I'll move that we do our county bid letting uh, at April, on April 7th and ends at uh, anyhow at, at 10 p.m. 10 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not coming. To, I, yeah. Do you have a second? I'll second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Wayne, how do you vote? I'll vote aye. Liza? Aye. Travis? Aye. Marvin? Aye. Gene, aye. Um, next is uh, permission to purchase two, or, uh, two motor gators. Um, our unit 102 and 103, we have, uh, that was what the, these are the two that had two, the two front end mulchers on. Uh, they're both John Deere's. The one, unit 102 has 6,496 hours on it, which is 504 hours short of the 6,000, or 7,000, six year, 7,000 warranty deal. And unit 103 has 6,864 hours, which is 136 hours short of the 7,000. These would have came up, these two machines would have came up in January, we would have bid them probably October, November um, for next year. But my thing is with these hours so close, once them hours hit that 7,000, we lose that, it's 100 and, Fifty-seven thousand eight hundred dollar buyback. How much was it? Hundred and fifty-seven thousand eight hundred. Each. Correct. Is there a way to extend the warranty on them at all? But the thing is, like these last ones that we did get, we only got a ninety thousand dollar buyback. There's that much of a difference between. Butler didn't even. Uh, Put a buyback on there so you're going to get at the end of that either you're going to keep that machine because it was at least their lease to own you're either going to keep that machine or you're going to get that uh with butler you're either going to keep it or you're just going to whatever they're going to value it at at the time it could be seventy five thousand. where these two machines are guaranteed, guaranteed. at one hundred and fifty seven thousand eight hundred. what are they new per machine three hundred and thirty six thousand. we would not need snow equipment on it's not we can transfer them ones that we have now what was 336? Right around, that's 332. Oh. That's what the total price is for oh. machines per Per each. machine, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. So it would be at about the same, like we had uh, the one uh, that we do, those two that we just got, we're, those are leased to own. This year we would not have any, the actual buyback was for the down payment. So those two machines that we just got, their uh, payments, their first lease payments are going to be in October of next year. Right, yes, yep. And then these would be in the same boat too. You would use your down payment, these two new ones, and then uh, they would, the, the pay, lease payments would be next year too. But you gotta remember, we're gonna, if we get these two, we're gonna have four leased machines, but they're leased to own, so. What are the lease payments? Um, 30, right around 33 for these ones. Yes. Was any of this budgeted? No. Um, you have well, 150000 in your budget for the purchase or lease of equipment for 21. Right. Do you, what do you plan on using that though? What other we have a, a tractor that we lease from our uh, RDO that we use for mowing ditches. And we had to make a lease payment on one of these. It was like 5000 That's what we 
have you or you know but so where do you see this 150 sitting at the end of the year it's not at at the end of the year no i don't know like oh i don't know i mean like what do you anticipate using out of it if you don't have any emergencies or like what do you actually have budgeted for well i mean we got this, that freight liner that's got almost 500,000 miles on it for one of the semis so i was kind of thinking there that we could Possibly, I mean, sooner or later, we're going to have to replace that one, we, too. We wouldn't have to, but like I say, it's got over 500,000 miles on that. How many hours did the ones that we just did the lease agreement they were for? Close that, and now, like, the new ones were these, the two that we just got, we went six years, same amount of years, and 8,000 hours. And these ones are 6,000 hours? 6490 they're at 7000 7, that's yeah, what the, 7, yeah, 6 or 7000 so we went up another 1000 hours on these two that we just got two I'm proposing it would be the same thing the 6 year 8000 hours so what what is our annual lease on the two do ones that you're proposing approximately well about 33000 for each machine okay, that so payment about would be next year for those two so that's 66000 for the two and then you're going to have another for the ones that we just got next year. Six years, we're going to have $140,000 in lease payments. Yeah. Well, we either buy them like we used to, or we're going to have to lease them. I mean, it's a lease to own. I mean, we still own it at the end. But the only thing with leasing is you're still paying some interest in there, too, you know, compared to. Right. I mean, at least you're not getting hit with one big payment for one machine. That's the nice thing about leasing. But it is a lease to own. It's, it's a, they call it a municipal lease. It's not like a car lease, most of them, where you at the end of three years, they Give come it. and take it, yeah. you know. We would have equity in that machine. And we would have the option to do that $90,000 buyback or maybe keep it another year, you know. Depends on the, depends on what, the resale of yellow right. steel. That's what drive. Six. Well, we went in 2023, we don't have no, none coming up. So these would be the two until that, the 2024 is when that next one would come up. Okay, so understanding, if I can run these numbers through my head, that um, if I would say this, I would say because of budget constraints, we would have to lease these for this year, these two new ones, and then look at options in the next uh, budgeting cycle as to purchasing some of them that's am possible. i am i right here or? come towards september is fall here you know because if we would um, purchase these what would that do to the budget to <laughs> that part of the budget that's 1.2 million over 1.2 million dollars just for four machines right yeah, yeah. Where would start off with right? yeah okay <laughs> Marv, do you remember what it was on that when we looked through that lease thing? You see your, see me, your head interest, rolling down. What the... was it we would save? Remember? Do you remember? I think it was like 30 some thousand, I think, for the two machines. Don't I think quote. that was each. I think it was close to 65. Well, but I'm I'd have by, to look, but I'm going by you know, if you're to buy out right, and then they gave us that because that Gene had brought that up. Okay. I remember. Ken, do you have estimates already from people for these two new motor graders? Well, it would be, you know, when we did that, when we bid the, it was two or more, so. They can honor that contract, already oh, owned. Yeah. But, get, okay, but with John Deere, so we can use the, both companies had two or more, an, an right. opportunity to bid on two or more. What I'm, where I'm getting at is, this is crucial, there's no question about it. We're talking $314,000 plus, 315,000, that we could possibly lose if these things get over 7,000 hours. Right. Do you run these in the wintertime? We've been this year when it was warm, mm -hmm. we would, we're all cutting washboards because nothing holds together. But yep. do you run yeah. all six okay. of them at the same so time? So what I'm getting at is not off. I mean, if we have to, yeah, but not off, not in the winter time. But mm -hmm. come summertime, and then we got one of the machines that we have a part-time guy comes in, so that one that is actually getting ran almost 50 hours a week. They add up, you know. That's another thing we talked about, too. We do two, we have two bladings per private individual upon request. For the, there's not a lot of counties that offer that. Stark County don't have that. McLean County don't have that. Dunn County don't do that. And that's a benefit to the county residents. You know, but the thing of it is, when you look at that in the long run, that does add up. If it takes that operator one hour to do an in and out, you know, and we do it, we, 
We don't make a special trip to that place, but when we're in that area, that's when we'll do it, but that adds up. And then when we do section lines and if we have snow removal, all them hours start to add up. And that's why we've been keep on going from, I think when Roy was here, we would go like, was it, it was 6,000 hours, that's when we went up to 6,500 and went to 7,000. Now we're trying to stretch these out 8,000 hours and still have the same amount of years because we put on. And then in the wintertime, you can't tell how much you're gonna use. If we have a bad winter, okay. they could be out 60 hours a week. And where I was going with my question about whether you use them during the winter was if we had a little bit more time to make our decision. Um, I asked the board the question, do, you, do we wanna consider getting new bids or do we want to just go by the bids that we already have? And it's up to the board. If you go with new bids, I guarantee you're gonna have a 3% up because they already went up. Right. You know, we're getting from bids actually from when it was. Okay, that's from, So that's a, a negative right there. You know? Okay, so that answers that question then, right? Right. And another thing too is if we, well, we'd have to make sure we don't go over that. And what Steve had said we could do with the 136, we'll ride that one up to 7,000, they would be here in April. The one that's got the 500 hours, we could take that one up to the 7,000 and only take ownership of that machine after that. So it could be sometime this fall. But next year's payments right. would end up being yes. being there regardless. Yeah, but I'll actually, if we go with it, all four payments are gonna be next year, not into this year, because you're using your that uh, the buyback for the down payment. How much, when we add all four of those payments together, what's that come up to? Mm. They're right, let's say 30, one was 37, one was 32, because the 37 was because the buyback of that cap right. was. Right. Right, so take 37, 32, and then 33, 33. Right. So that only gives them a couple of, th 10, $10,000. About 135, right? Yes, 135. That only gives them about 10,000 to spend this year. No, we don't have, we don't. Oh, we're not spending that this, this it'd be next year. Oh, yeah. next year, yeah. Because the down and lease payments, payments. Down, payment down payment, okay, yeah. But you'd have to budget mm. for that for next year. Yeah. And, and the, the, this is a, this is a bugger. You, you get behind on that yellow steel, like you, like you said, you got those hourly cutoffs. The only thing that, uh, uh, the only thing that probably some idle hours uh, are being done in that electronic meter that that that's accurate it'll kick so you know sitting by the fuel bay and they're in going to the bathroom or something them diesels got starters in them so right uh, yeah we discussed about that too we have yeah i mean that all adds up right. too it it's it's like my loader tractor i got to go out there and cut twine well that that takes me more time to cut the twine idle than it does for me to haul it out but, but it's adding up but it adds <laughs> right. up yeah yep. so, so we have about what 150 you said budgeted for lease equipment yes. for 2024 no, no. Mm -hmm. equipment. For That's for the we would have to visit this again okay. for next year comes october right, right. for these payments how much of that budget has been spent already or will be spent Okay. Well, we just got that. The lease payment was like fifty five hundred, and then so right around one hundred and five forty some thousand. And then when we lease that tractor or rent that tractor through RDO for um, cutting ditches, I think it's later on what four thousand. Yeah, you remember? That's yeah, that's and that's later on this fall when we get charged for that. So you're looking at buying a new semi though. Well, no, if, if we would have to, that's the only thing I can see what we would because like I can say. You foresee not spending much if you're. If we don't have to, no, we wouldn't. You know, right. If we don't have to. I, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just and trying to put together about where we where we would fall into the budget for this year, and of course it would be. Um, I mean, I we don't let let's just. Well, what I'm pondering is if we were to lease these this year and we within the budget items we would we're obligated for next year already so we're if we lease them this year we are setting ourselves what we're going to have to spend for next year right. that's what i'm right. running through my head so that we don't that 130 and yeah, that we don't right. 
right, run ourselves up right, against right. the wall, kick the can down the road. As but another I mean, thought to do, if we would have that, we could, you know, if we wouldn't have to buy a semi or something, we could take this year's budget and pay more towards the principal on them too. That's an option too. That would make you know, <laughs> I'm just trying to save money down the road with interest. But how many years can you run your grader before it gets up to seven thousand hours? Well, this was all going to be. It would be six years in January when we got these two that I'm proposing now. I and understand the lease, yeah. the six, the six year lease. Yeah. It t can we run them seven years before we get to 7,000 hours, or what does Doubt it usually it. be? Doubt it. Doubt it. We tried that. To one. help you out here, Marv, and okay. the Board of Commissioners, you know, we've been in a grace period for several years here. There were days when I was uh, back, back in 09 or whatever, and uh, like you were saying, uh, we. I don't know the amount of hours, but I, I know we ran till midnight. That machine started at 6.30 till midnight. And this went on for several, several days. So we've been on the grace of God here because we've had beautiful winters, really. So to help you out, Marv, uh, you'll never probably see uh, these machines go that long at that amount of hours again. It, it's just not going to happen. It, you you go out there pushing snow and and you uh, you just eat up the hour meter. Am I right? Yeah, we don't have a yeah. crystal ball. We can't see what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, we could have a bunch of winter here in March yet. Who knows? Oh yeah. Oh, God. we've been here long enough. I mean, March, April, April too. April too. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In 2024, you said we're probably having to replace the the next two graders, right? Yeah, that's when the next ones, are, the next one would come up. Next one? Yep. When would that's the other one come? Machine. When would the other one come up after that? Um, I think 2025. So, so it I isn't it isn't just six years at this lease payment. It's going to be it's going to be three more years at this lease payment. Then we're going to add another machine. Then we're going to wait two more years and add another one machine to that. That's we're looking way down the road. Yeah. 2025 releases. Right. We could try to stagger one too, like we had talked. You know, yeah, right? that's where I'm trying to go with this. Is, is there's there a options down the road, but now's the time that <laughs> we got. If we lose the buyback, that's 158. Yeah, you know, the buyback, these are right? The yeah, these one. are huge. And Next like one. I say, Butler didn't even give us nothing. No. So yeah, we don't want to lose that 315,000. No. It's too bad we got pushed kind of in a corner here. <laughs> don't have a. You know, I guess our options are down the road. Like I say, we got that 2023 where we don't, and then we could. Possibly looking into maybe doing an extended warranty on someone and pushing them ones out a little bit so we can stagger these more so we're not getting, you know, the most is two in a year, but two in a year is quite a bit. But it's just the way that worked out. You know, a guy, it's been like that. We've been doing those rotations since I've been here and when I was here. So just well, I'm gonna, and we even had loaders in there. We haven't, you know, we haven't had a new loader since 2011 and 12. Well, I not think that I, we need one yet, but I'm just saying that they're getting older too, just like that. Semi over 500,000 miles, and this is exactly why we're looking at getting a five year plan on replacing equipment so we don't get in this pinch. I think I know your answer, but I want to set you up. What's your recommendation? Uh, <laughs> you did say I'd say up. we go with what we, I mean, because with that, those that buyback's huge, and then if it has that same bumper to bumper warranty where they come up, we don't have to pay for so. I mean, if we want to keep on providing the service that we are, that's. Mm -hmm. Will they go to like 9,000 hours now instead of eight? Would they entertain such things or is that a... Uh, yeah, we talked about with Steve and Casey sky. too and then you, you lose on the back end. I mean, yeah, they don't like pushing them out that far. So so what, you, what you're probably saying is even if we push it out to 9,000, the buyback would go down. Mm. Is that what you're saying? They might not even offer a buyback. Okay. That was, you know, because there was even talk, John Deere talked about not doing a buyback either for the last couple of years. So did our, our butler, and then all of a sudden this last year, butler did say no more buyback. So who knows? Well, next year, if a guy was to bid a machine, they might not even, RDO might not even do a buyback. They wouldn't have that 90000 Nobody wants to say he's going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> How long are those uh, <clears throat> bids good for? Well, this is, it would be, <clears throat> Steve had said a year since this was, I don't remember when we had, this was in August. But like I say, we're going to keep on, 
you know, we're only 136, we'd have to leave that machine, uh, that one machine idle until they are not moved much more than that, because we don't want to, you know. What I'm getting at is do we have to make the decision today or can we think or about can it we for today? table it for a little bit yeah. so we can get our we can do it till next ducks week in too, a row. And just see. The only thing is, like these machines, it's going to push that, you know, if we were to get the permission today, it, Steve was saying it would take, because they got to build them, it would, two months, he was thinking April build time. So this would push us probably now into May, if we possibly, which, but. We're suffering that's fine. I mean, I don't, I was just gonna do is push it for, I mean, I don't, wouldn't have a problem with that. If you guys have, wanna have time, then do it next meeting. Because the next meeting is March I was third, right? that too, Travis. That's mm -hmm. that's yeah. not we got sticker shot. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, if you guys got any questions, you can my, call me at the shop. Mm -hmm. I probably will do that. I would say you probably need to get some calls. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm here for. So. Well, I need someone to step up and. <laughs> I would make a motion that we table this till next meeting. I'll second that. <laughs> Any further discussion on our motor graders? Okay, motion is to table this until the next meeting, which is two weeks. Let's we'll, we'll see Ken in two weeks then. Um, Liza, how do you vote? Aye. Travis? Aye. Wayne? Aye. Marvin? Aye. I'll say aye. I think that's it. You just Anything decide. else? Nope. I tried to spend enough money. In <laughs> you did good. <laughs> you did a real good job of it. I think you're going to have to start selling flash keys yeah. so we can have a fundraiser going on here. Getting close to dinner time somewhere. So. The, <laughs> they drive right through the through the sheriff's bay back there when they hand them out back there, you know, right in that garage. They look kind of mean. We'll just have them stay at the hotel for a little bit. <laughs> Help okay, thank out. you, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We can keep the cell warm. Regional Development Council. There we are. We'll get right on time. Perfect. Yeah. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Not bad. Good. Well, at least the weather's better today. <laughs> Driving around in 40 below is not fun. Uh, well, thanks for having us. Um, I'm here, I'm Brent Atchum, I'm the Executive Director um, with the Lewis Clark Development Group, uh, which I know a lot of you are very familiar with, uh, but uh, you know, we actually have three different organizations within there. We have the Regional Development Council, the um, Certified Development Company, and the uh, Community Works North Dakota. We'll talk just a little bit about that just to refresh your memory real quick. Um, with me I have uh, Paulette Paulson, she is our Multifamily Housing Director. Um, formerly uh, with the organization as our EDA CARES uh, director, which um, we'll talk about in a little bit. But basically, um, I'm just here to kind of update you on some of the stuff that's coming up in the regional council, some of them we're working on, um, some of the activity that was going on over the last year. Um, fortunately, I'm not here asking for money. So that's always a good thing, right? Because um, I have been here before, asking for money. Um, and, I, and I know you guys do uh, pay county dues, and we certainly appreciate that because we couldn't do what we do um, and, and have these programs available without you guys' support on that, um, as well as the other nine counties in our region. So, a um, couple things, that the, the highlights of what's going on. Obviously, you, you know that we do, we do a lot of lending, a lot of gap financing for both commercial and for housing, down payment assistance on the housing side, um, gap financing on the, on the business side. Uh, we continue to do that. Um, we continue to have a lot of success doing that, um, seeing businesses grow. Um, I'm actually heading over to meet with a couple of bankers over here in Beulah and Hazen um, to, um, after this just so that we can uh, try to continue to grow that. Uh, I know there's a lot of stuff going on, um, a lot of you know stuff with the, uh, the new administration with the stuff going on at GRE and all that stuff that are kind of really um, making things fluid in what's going on. So we want to make sure that, that everybody's aware of our program because um, one of the biggest things that we can help to do is to diversify the economy. So if there is job loss, there's programs there. Um, but as well as growing internal businesses from, from the inside out, right? So, um, so we're gonna continue to do that. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that came up out of the, the whole COVID situation um, and the CARES Act uh, that was done back in March was 
Uh, the Economic Development Administration um, put out a couple of uh, programs, um, and since uh, the Regional Council is an Economic Development District um, and for this 10 county area, um, they were non-competitive grants. One of those grants was, it, it was the CARES, um, it's the EDA planning grant um, under the CARES Act. And what that was, was basically what EDA wanted to do is um, to have all of the regional councils across the state, or actually across the nation, um, go back and look at what happened um, with COVID. What, you know, what went good, what went bad, right? Um, what can we do better? And so, um, if you all remember it, I, I do, back in March, I sat on Zoom call after Zoom call after Zoom call. I mean, it was, it was six hours a day of Zoom calls, right? With the state and the feds and everybody else with all the programs that were coming up. And I'm thinking to myself, if I'm a business owner, do I have time to sit there for six hours to figure out where I can get help, right? So obviously there has to be better communication, um, better coordination, and so that's, um, so Paulette was originally hired um, to do that um, and, and to, uh, to coordinate that, and so I'll let her talk a little bit about what her efforts were on that, um, but so anyway, so she'll talk a little bit more what we're doing um, with, that, with that award and what we're, um, how it's going to help the counties. The other thing that came out of the EDA CARES Act um, was a revolving loan fund. Um, now, if you guys were on the commission back in the 90s, um, basically when we got revolving, <laughs> <laughs> I won here either. I didn't start in 2001, right? So, I, I, beat, um, I beat you by a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I always if wanted. You, if you were, well, just go back and read the minutes because I'm sure you're crazy. Um, but basically, every time that we've ever got a revolving loan fund to do what we do on the business side, we've always had to have local match. So you guys were our local match. We would get, um, you know, five hundred thousand dollars from EDA, and they would say, okay, but you got to get money from the, you know, from the local area. So we'd come to you guys, and then you and all the ten counties would pitch in, and we get like one hundred fifty, so we'd have a six hundred fifty thousand dollar fund. Um, this time, because of what was going on with COVID. Um, it was not matched. So we got a million dollar revolving loan fund for this 10 county area um, to, to help to respond to what's going on. And it, the nice thing, that, a couple things that they did. One, didn't require a match, so I didn't have to come asking for everybody to, to pony up and put money into this. Um, the other thing that it did is it has less restrictions than some of our other funds um, because they want to get that money out quickly um, to, the, to the communities. And we've been doing that. We, we actually, right at the onset, um, set up, um, modified some of our funds to get money out. Yeah, we were doing um, no, uh, six month no payment loans, zero interest, um, so that as people are waiting to get like SBA funding or these other funding sources, they needed the money today. They didn't need to go through the bureaucratic system of the federal government and wait three months, right? They had to pay their employees, <laughs> right? So, right. Yeah. so we came up with that and saying, look, you apply to us, within a week we can have that money to you, and then when you get that money from the SBA, um, then you just pay us back. And if you don't get money from SBA after six months, then we'll just turn that $50,000 out at you know 4% interest over a period of time that they can afford. Just about all of them paid us off as soon as they got the SBA money. So, um, but it got the money out there quickly, right? And so this is what we're looking at the EDA revolving loan fund as well. Getting that money out there, very flexible terms and a lot less restrictions um, than we had than we had on some of the other funds. Unfortunately, it's EDA, so when it comes back in, we have to lend it out the next time. It goes back to all the old rules, but you know, we, we'll deal with that. We'll still get it done. Um, and the last big thing that we that's happening, um, and, and it's because of what we do on the housing side, and I'm sure some of you are, are aware of um, what's happening with Lutheran Social Services and, and their housing, and there's a lot of um, units out here that they've been managing. Um, and so, um, and we had worked with Lutheran Social Services for a number of years prior to this, right? We've been uh, helping them fund some of these projects. Um, and so because of they're getting out of the business of, of housing, and we are a housing organization, um, we're at, we actually started a housing management company um, back in November. Um, we were kind of caught off guard like everybody else when they finally said, we're not doing anything anymore. <laughs> that was a little shocking to us too. But um, we had already put the, the groundwork in place. And so I think right now we have um, 20 properties under contract with almost 500 units. Um, a lot of those were the LSS units. Um, so we're making sure that these affordable units in, in all these small towns across the, the state are still gonna have management. And so if you have, um, and it's not just the LSS units. So if you have property owners um, that are, you know, that, that have affordable units but, and they want to get out of it, um, you know, maybe they're 
uh, a nonprofit board that they're all aging and they're saying, um, you know, we don't want to manage this anymore. We're obviously a nonprofit. We're going to keep them affordable. We would manage those. Um, we would even entertain uh, acquiring them if they want to, uh, if they want to get rid of them, right? So um, we do have both sides. So we do acquire properties and then we would manage them. Our goal, like any other goal, is we keep them in the programs that they're in, whether that's USDA or whether that's um, um, HUD or whatever. And then we, we you know, it's all about the tenants. It's keeping those tenants in there, keeping their rent where it's at, right? Because um, if they come out of the programs that they're in and somebody else, um, like a, a, a a for-profit, and for-profits could do the affordable as well, but if the, if somebody buys it and puts it to market rate, somebody's rent could go from $200 to $600 overnight, and they can't afford that, so then they would have to find other housing. Right, right. So our goal is to make sure that does not happen, and so we're working we're working with all the agencies, housing finance, and, and all those agencies to make sure that happens. So I'll let um, Paulette talk just a little bit about the EDA CARES Act, and then we'll open it up for any questions that you guys have. Right, and I was just gonna add on the property management side, there just aren't a lot of property management companies that come out to rural North Dakota anymore and do the HUD paperwork and the USDA paperwork. It's, mm -hmm. it's just a lot of work and it's usually not worth um, anybody's, a for-profit company's time to come because it takes a lot. And so we're not in competition. You know, we didn't create this company to be in competition with, we just saw that there was a gap in, you know, I come from Rutland, North Dakota, and when the property manager decides to quit managing the little fourplex in Rutland, what are they gonna do? And so that's kind of where we're gonna fill the gap. So I'm really excited about that. Um, as far as EDA um, goes, the first thing that we had to discover was what happened to the communities when COVID came into our lives. Some of it was good, depending on the type of company you had, you might have been, did very well. You know, if you were making masks, you probably did really well. Um, but there were a lot of companies that didn't fare as well. And so the first thing that we tried to do is, I can't guess from Bismarck, North Dakota, what's happening in every individual community. So we have pushed out surveys to try to just figure out what is everybody struggling with? What is everybody succeeding in? And as those surveys come in, we're gonna kind of analyze the data and then come back to the communities and say, here's, here's kind of what we gathered and what can we do to help? Because I know a lot of counties also have the multi-hazard mitigation plan. I had to learn that when I came on because that was a really long word um, phrase. And so how do we correct that? Because if we look into some of the plans, when I got to the page on what do we do in a pandemic, it was probably just a couple sentence paragraph because most of us, I know I hadn't lived through a pandemic yet really to even remember. So we need to be there and support you and say, when it comes again, because they keep telling us it will, how do we help ourselves and plan better for the next one? So we'll work with you on that. And then the other aspect of this position, which is really great, is um, technical assistance, free technical assistance. So when a company comes in, like, like Brent said, they're overwhelmed by all these wonderful opportunities, but they don't know even where to start. They can call us and for free, we'll come out and help them figure out how do you get your application in line. So when you do apply for any of the programs with say, you know, um, Lewis and Clark, that your package is ready. Or when you go to the bank and we partner with the bank, we can sit and make sure that that's a really good package and you only have to do it once. And again, it's free because of the support that you give Lewis and Clark Development Group. So we're really excited about those. Did I miss anything else? Um, other than once we have this all together, we'll actually, like, so mm -hmm. she's actually gone through all of your guys' plans, all the 10 county plans. And so we'll come back to you with actual recommendations into your plan and you can either incorporate them or you can ignore them, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know? um, but we, we hope that they're good recommendations that you know, hopefully save you a lot of time of having to go back into your plan, and because nobody likes to go back into these plans and review them and rework them and all that stuff, right? Um, so we will come back with recommendations saying, um, this is what we're seeing in the other nine counties, and, and, and we're actually working, all eight regional councils are working together because we all got that same thing, the same grant from EDA. So it will be more of a statewide collaborative on it, but it will be still drilled down specific to the different counties based on what they have in their plans. So um, over the next uh, over the next probably year and a half, um, we will be uh, less than that now because it's a two-year grant, but we hope to have it done quicker than that, but we'll be um, in contact with you, with you guys and the staff at the county to kind of work through some of that stuff. So. 
because I think we found out some good things. I mean, I know that a mask at 40 below is really warm. <laughs> and I would have never thought that before. So, I mean, there are some really good things that we can take from it and, and just improve our, our life, whether we have a pandemic or not. So, I think it'll be good. With that, we'll open up to any questions that you have, what we're going on, what we're seeing in, uh, in the area or in, across the nation. And uh, like I said, we do a lot of, um, some of our programs are statewide, some of them are just regional. Um, but uh, so we get involved in a lot of stuff. What are, what are your 10 counties? Uh, they are the 10 counties in South Central. So they're um, Mercer, Oliver, Morton, uh, Burley, Sioux, uh, Sheridan, uh, McLean, Kidder, Grant, Grant. yeah, <laughs> what's the last one? <laughs> you did it out of the alphabetical order. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. David's the South Central Judicial District. There you oh, go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. They use that same yeah. that same map yeah. for about three or four different ones. So I, heard it, it, I heard it's kind of the sauerkraut counties. So. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live down in Lincoln. So yeah. Sour and everything. What in the world? <laughs> I can't disagree. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then, uh, have you acquired any LSS housings in in our area? We have not. I'm actually going over to talk uh, with uh, Wayne Ho Af Wayne Hoffner um, okay. after this meeting to look at the one in Beulah that's uh, being managed right or owned and managed by them right now. So, yep. Looking at that one, but we are, you know, LSS did quite a bit in the in the western part, so that that's I think one of the few that's in this. Um, county. This far east, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but they did, you know, we are we're looking at some up in Williston, and then you know, like I said, manage wise, we're across the state, we're managing all over, but yeah. So yeah, we'll look at we're right now all of the LSS properties are in receivership except for the ones that got pulled out, so the majority of them are in receivership, which is kind of like a bankruptcy thing, um, and so. They're going through it and evaluating all the properties, and as they do that, then those properties will be, um, obviously, they're, they're gonna try to liquidate those, um, whether that's through a realtor or whatever, and so obviously we'll be looking at, um, at it at that point. So, yeah, we're actively uh, working with the receiver, with LSS, um, and looking at acquiring properties, as they make sense, right? I mean, we're not gonna put ourselves in a situation where we're, um, you know, there's properties that don't make sense that aren't cash flowing, Well, thank you, and if you have any questions, certainly uh, feel free to reach out to us. I think yeah. Paula's going to hand out her cards here, and uh, cool. you probably have my information. <laughs> <laughs> but certainly, and if you have businesses or homeowners or, or potential homeowners, thank you. have them reach out to us. Thank you. It, it, Paul is free, and we, we can help him. <clears throat> thank you much. Great. Thank you very much, Brent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I lost track here. Are we on six? Next. Yes, so financial. On financial reports. Okay. Hey, I, this shouldn't take very long at all. Two questions. And this is, one is for the auditor. Where, which fund is passbook savings? Is there a fund number for passbook savings? Thank you. Okay. Um, and then another question for you, please, Shannon. Where does the money for 8049 reside? We have a fund, 8049, and I want to know where that resides. That's the landfill closure fund, I believe. We have a, a fund for 8050, and the money's in the bank, and, and I see that on the treasurer's report, but where does the money for 8049 reside? We put money in there every single year. Where does it? So it's in one of our banks. It's in the bank. Yes. That's what I thought, okay? Okay. All right. Just a few more things. So that's in the financial report? No. So just a few more things, please. The next thing, I have this sheet in front of you that's colored with the red. This is Shanna's report. It's the statement of fund activity. I have the same concern with this one as I did with the Mercer County financial statement. It's... Is building fund does not match the treasurer's report. 
So I'm, I received two financial reports, and neither one of these are matching the treasurer's report as of the same date. Now I will go on record that I will not accept the Mercer County financial statement of 1231-2020 or the statement of fund activity 1231-2020 as they do not reflect the balance in our treasurer's reports. That's all I had on that sheet. The next one that I have is the 8050 Landfill Loan Fund. There are, when you look at the trial balance, look at the very bottom bracket on that page. You see the trial balance goes up from year to year, but there isn't any revenue. It's not, on a trial balance, it doesn't show any revenue. So our trial balance report, it doesn't show me that. It should, that's what it's there for. It should show the beginning, the revenue, the expenses, and then what's left over. Our trial balance report doesn't have any values in that revenue, it, it, but it goes up from 17 to 18, and it goes up every single year. So that report could have better information. I'll start back at the top. The very top, it shows the, of the bank's statements of 13 through 20, and it shows you what our balance is, 15.9. Now you go back down to the bottom, the balance is 82. We're not even close there. Go to the second bracket down, there's AS400 reports, and I've gone through all the revenue reports. This is what it shows for revenue. The revenue and expense report has different numbers. So what I'm saying is that this landfill loan fund does not reflect what's in the bank and it's hard for me or anyone to go back and see what's occurring. Here's my suggestion. I just want you guys to be aware. I suggest we let our outside auditor determine what the correct value should be in this fund when he does his audit. But I'll be willing to listen to any comments or suggestions. Mr. Chairman, I only have one more thing, if there's no comments. It's something you can take home and look it over. I looked at the CARES transactions for 12-31-2020. That's that last sheet. And you guys might want to put that date on there, 12-31-2020. You got it on there. I put it on yours when you weren't looking. Oh, okay. Okay. The 21-29 account, it shows that we had some money put in there of 678, 629, 32. So much got transferred to the general fund. There was only 495, 886, 44 left in there. Okay. All of the 2104 got transferred to the general fund. This is per the motions that you, you guys had and accepted. So the total transfer to the general fund has been 581. The oh, the total transfer to the general fund is 581. What was deposited to the general fund, I shouldn't abbreviate because I forget what my abbreviations are, was 123. So the general fund is going to get 705, 271 as of 12, 31, 2020 on the revenue reports. Okay, I just wanted you guys to be aware of that. As of 12, 31, 2020, we did not have 500,000 in that fund. We only had four, uh, in, the, in the money that was set aside for Siren, we set aside 500,000. We only had 495,886. Not as big difference, but it's not what was made per the motion. Okay, that's all I have, sir. Okay. That's okay. Sometimes you are aware of what's on the agenda because I sent it to you Friday morning and you don't put it on there. I was on vacation on Friday morning, so I thought the agenda went on. Okay. Anything else that you want to present? No, sir. That's okay. all. Landfill report. That's what I gave you right here okay. with all the brackets. Okay. We're covered. <laughs> okay. We're good. Well, just unless you want me to talk about something else, uh -huh. I'm good. Okay. Housing authority. 
We did that, we did one. that with we did the that. treasurer's report. Okay. Yep. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> We're good. Anything else? Hearing none. <laughs>